When it comes to non-humanoid animation like cloth, paper or liquids, it becomes very tough to add that type of motion into game engines because there are no bones associated with them. These simulations are driven by physics-based software like Blender, Houdini, or other similar programs. So you might wonder how in the world we are going to add that type of animation into game engines. That's where vertex animation texture comes to the rescue. In this technique, we bake each vertex position into textures and use that texture to recreate the animation in game engines using custom shaders. This technique is very performant and can be used with ECS in Unity. There are third-party assets on the Unity Asset Store that use this technique with ECS. Now, here's how the baking works. We know that each vertex on our object has an X, Y, and Z position in world space, and we also represent color channels in RGB format. For example, the color red in RGB format is 255, 0, 0. So we can actually map our X, Y, and Z coordinates into RGB format, right? But there's a catch. Vertex positions in world space can have really huge values, and our RGB channels range from 0 to 255 or 0 to 1. We cannot add a value like 500 in our RGB format. One solution to this problem could be using HER images, which basically have a greater texture range beyond 0 to 255. However, the problem with HER images is file size. These images can become extremely large, which eventually increases the build size of our game. Another solution is using a bounding box. We basically find the maximum and minimum positions a vertex can travel and then map that to RGB. To understand this, let's take an example of a 12-inch ruler and a pencil we want to measure with it. The bounding box is our ruler, which has a minimum value of 0 and a maximum value of 12 inches. Now, to measure the pencil, we start from 0 and get its total length. Let's say the pencil's length is 7 inches. If we divide this 7 by the maximum length, which is 12, we will get approximately 0.58. In this way, we can map any value to a range between 0 and 1. Now, this example is a simplification to help you understand how a bounding box works to map values into the range of 0 to 1. Similarly, we can calculate the maximum and minimum positions a vertex can travel by analyzing each frame of the animation. To do this, we iterate through every frame and record the range of movement for each vertex. Once we have this range, we can map it to RGB value. This allows us to encode the vertex position data efficiently into textures which can then be used by shaders in Unity or other engines to drive animation. Now, to get this vertex animation data into our shader, we use a new UV set, like UV2. You might think UVs are just for regular textures, and you'd be right about the first UV set. But with vertex animation textures, we use UV2 for a different purpose, which is to find the animation data within the VAT texture. Think of UV2 as a map that tells each vertex where to look in the VAT texture to get its position for the current animation frame. This lets the shader move the vertices around, creating the animation. This method is super fast because the GPU does all the heavy lifting, making it great for complex animations or lots of animated objects. This may feel overwhelming, but fear not, we have Blender to help us. And it offers a free add-on for this task, which is called OpenVAT. In my Blender scene, I have a cloth simulation. Let's download the necessary add-on. Navigate to Edit Preferences and in the Get Extension tab, search for OpenVAT and install it. After installation, OpenVAT will appear in the side panel. I recommend restarting Blender at this point. Next, in the directory section, choose where you want to save the baked object for later use in Unity. Also, you can see the other options, like the number of frames and texture resolution. Select the object you wish to bake and click Create VAT. The baking process duration depends on the model's complexity. Once baking is complete, a new object appears in the scene, providing a preview of how the animation will look in a game engine. If I hide the original object and play the animation, you'll see it's working correctly. However, it's not a real-time simulation, it's driven by vertex animation. This is achieved using geometry node. The selected object has a geometry node applied, and you can see the minimum and maximum bounding box information, along with the generated texture assigned to the geometry node. So, you can see this when I go to the UV section, and when I move the UV, you can see our animation is driven by the texture in Blender. Let's walk through how to use this in Unity. First, we need to install the OpenVAT package. I've included a GitHub link in the description. Copy that link, then in Unity, 
Go to Window Package Manager and choose Add Package from Git URL. Paste the link and click Add to install it. Once the installation is complete, drag and drop the folder you created in Blender into your Unity Project's Assets directory. Now, in the Unity Editor, go to Tools and you should see Open VAT Editor. Click on it. You'll need to specify the path to the folder you just imported. Do that, then click Proceed. This will generate a prefab inside that folder. Now, when you drag that prefab into your scene, it will play the animation you baked in Blender. You might notice it's currently black, so let's adjust the color. This animation is driven by a custom shader in Unity. As you can see, we have textured data and bounding box data. OpenFiat actually provides two types of shaders. The second shader allows us to add an albedo or normal texture to the object if it has them. This is possible because we're utilizing the second UV channel. The first UV channel can be used for regular texture mapping, while the second UV channel handles the animation data. If you're unfamiliar with UVs, materials, and textures, you can click the I button to learn more about them. Now, if we hit play, you should see the animation working perfectly in Unity. I hope you found this explanation helpful. Please like, share, and subscribe if you did. We're really close to reaching 1,000 subscribers, and your support means a lot. I'll see you in the next video.